At magandang magandang umaga mga kapatid! <laughs> Good morning everyone and welcome to our Friday Scripture Study. I hope that uh, we're all ready once again to study uh, the Word, the Scriptures. And we'll start with the singing. Para mabuhayan po tayo ng dugo. Father Gary. Amen. Good morning po. Good morning sa inyong lahat. Blessed Friday morning. Let's turn your... Kantay po natin yung Psalms 119. Please turn your scriptures in Psalms 119. And dyan po tayo kukuha ng ating mga, ng ating dalawang kanta ngayong umaga. Alright? Let's sing Dalet and Hay. Dalet and Hay. Verse 25 until verse 40. Alep bet gemel Dalet Hay. Dalet and Hay. Alright? Nasa inyong mga screen na po yan. Alright. Medyo na po kayo. Ready? Antahin po natin. Hey, man. <coughs> My soul be there until the dance we can thou me according to thy word my soul melted first one day for heavy death send him thou me according unto thy word i have declared my ways and thou heardest me teach me thy statutes Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous words. Verse 29. Remove from me the way of life. And grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have all laid before me. I have stopped unto thy testimonies. O oh, Yahuwah, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. 33. Teach me, O oh, Yahuwah, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall. Serve it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments. For therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimony. Not to covet to stand. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity. We can love me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have long after thy precepts, we can mean thy righteousness. Amen. Praise Yahuwah. I hope and pray na Makapag-aral po tayo ng sabay-sabay ngayong umaga. And kung may mga tulog pa, gising na po. And please join us online. And itutuloy natin yung pag-aral natin ng Book of Genesis. But before that, let's go to Yahuwah in prayer. Father Yahuwah in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Elohim of Abraham, Yatsak, and Yacoub. Our Elohim, we praise and thank you, Father, for this morning. Binigay niyo po sa amin. Salamat sa maayos na kapahingahan na binigay niyo sa amin, Panginoon. And salamat sa pagising sa amin sa panibagong buhay na ito. And uh, I pray, Father, na 
uh, mag-aral po muli kami ng inyong salita ay pray father na tulungan niyo po kami ipaunawa niyo po sa amin ang inyong salita ang dalangin ko Panginoon uh, kung may mga kapatid pa kami nasa, na, na hindi naka online ay pray father na dalhin niyo po sila sa inyong gawain and may mga kapatid kami na nasa trabaho ngayon nasa labas Panginoon ay pray father yung pag-iingat para sa kanila layuin niyo po sila sa mga kumakalat na pandemic ngayon Panginoon Salamat Panginoon sa inyong ikrisaya na meron kami na natututo po kami ng inyong salita. Salamat sa pagbukas ng puso't isipan ng bawat isa na, na pinapaunawa niyo po sa amin yung mga bagay na hindi namin nauunawaan before. And I pray, Father, tulungan niyo po kami na mas maintindihan ito nang sa gayon Panginoon maipal, ma, 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 maipamuhay namin, maituro namin sa iba Panginoon. And gawin niyo pong pagpapala yung ikrisaya nito Panginoon na may mga tao na hindi nakakakita ng katotohanan, may mga tao na hanggang ngayon is Uh, hindi pa rin natututunan ng pagsunod ng tamang pagsunod sa inyo. I pray, Father, gamitin niyo po yung buhay ng bawat isa na nandito sa Ecclesia yan ito. Makita yung pagmamahal sa bawat isa, may pakita kung sino po talaga kayo, and may pakita, Panginoon, na ang inyong karakter is all about love, Panginoon. Salamat po, salamat sa pagpapaunawa sa amin ito. And ngayon, Panginoon, mag-aaral po kami at itutuloy namin ang pag-aaral sa Genesis. I pray, Father, buksan niyo po yung puso, puso't isipan ng bawat isa. Ihanda niyo po kami, Panginoon, na matutunan kami either literal meaning, Panginoon, or mas malalim na spiritual meaning, as mas malalim na kaulugan ng inyong salita. Ipaunawa niyo po ito sa amin. Salamat po. May mga pagkakataon na nagkukulang kami, Panginoon. May mga pagkakamali kaming nagagawa. Patawarin niyo po kami. And I pray, Father, tulungan niyo po kami na maintindihan ito. At hindi na po namin maulit. Nang sa gayon po, madakila ka namin. Ang inyong pangalan lamang ang aming maitaas, Panginoon, at hindi po yung aming mga sarili. Salamat sa lahat ng ito. Patawad po sa mga pagkukulang namin. Ito po ang aking dalangin sa pangalan ng iyong anak na si Yahushua. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, let's sing one more song. Zion and Ket, verse 49 until verse 64. Psalms 119, Zion and Ket. Alep bet gimelda let heibab Zion, Ket, Zion and Ket. All right. <coughs> Excuse me, Paul. Remember the word until I serve upon which I was tossed into hope. This is my comfort in my affliction. For the word had quickened me. Amen. A cloud have had me great day and derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I remember thy judgment so bold, O Yahuwa, and have comforted myself. For all had taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name, O Yahuwah, in the night. And have kept thy law. Amen. This I had because I kept thy precepts. Let's go to Ken. Thou art my portion, O Yahuwah. I have said that I will keep thy words. I am cheated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I turn on my ways and turn my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to give. Thy commandment. Do not delay, brethren. 61. Bands of the wicked have brought me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee, 
because of thy righteous judgment. I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. The earth, O oh Yahuwah, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Amen. Zion and Ket. Good morning, preacher. All right. So you might be wondering, ano ba yung Zion? Ano ba yung Ket? Now, if you go to your scriptures, actually, if you go to Psalm 119, in every eight verses, from verses 1 to 8, 9 to 16, 9 to 15. Uh, basta every 8 verses, you could see like uh, parang may chapter na sarili po yung Psalm 119. And it starts with Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, and we just sang Zion and Ket. So you might be wondering what these are. For those who are new, these are actually Hebrew alphabets. Alphabets, al alphabets. <laughs> All right, these are Hebrew alphabets, and hopefully later on we can learn these, so that um, there's so much information in these just in these letters alone. They're actually numerical values as well, and uh, they have uh, a lot of uh, uh, definitions. I mean, just the letters themselves. How much more if they make up words later on? So. We will study this later on. Sa ngayon, hindi, pero pinapakita ko po sa inyo. This is Zion. And this is Ket. Alright? So, those are the two, uh, two octaves, if you like, na inawit po natin sa Psalm 119. Alright? So, I hope that uh, we're all learning. And kung naiintriga kayo, you can search it in the internet. Find the Hebrew alphabet and you'll see this, uh, the same uh, characters. All right? So, uh, we're almost finished with the book of Genesis. We have 11 chapters to go. And uh, after we finish the book of Genesis, we'll have a recap of everything. I mean, a thorough recap of everything so that those who cannot follow uh, will be able to be refreshed. All right, uh, those who were following us will be able to have that uh, refresher course. And those who were not able to follow will be able to follow if you watch that, if you watch that recap, that will give you an overview of the whole book of Genesis. Now, um, I have uh, heard some comments that a lot of people are having a hard time following our lessons. If you miss one, then it will be hard to follow all throughout because this is a continuous story. This is parang ano lang to eh, parang nagbabasa ka ng libro or if even if you're watching like a series and you miss one, then you don't understand why the, the other things happened uh, as you catch up with us. So I hope that, uh, I, I really hope that we are all on the same page but I do understand that there are brethren who are left behind. But please don't be discouraged. Kung discouragement lang, let's study the book of Yosef. So much discouragement here. But he did not fail to acknowledge Yahuwah in everything that uh, happened to his life. All right, so open your scriptures to Genesis chapter 39. And hopefully, we will finish three chapters today. Very easy to understand. We'll talk about what we can learn from these, uh, these passages. But uh, two, th two things I want you to see when we read these passages, the historical value, the historical value of why this happened, because history will explain what is said in the future, what is said in the Gospels, what is said in the New Testament. And it will show you that in Genesis so Genesis pa lang po, ay makikita nyo na ang Panginoong Yahusha. And actually, he was with Joseph. And uh, it's actually in the book of, in, uh, in the Targum of Onkelos. And mamaya, I'll explain to you what the Targum of Onkelos again is. But open your scriptures in Genesis chapter 39. Okay? Genesis chapter 39. Are you there? All right. 
So Genesis chapter 39 to 41. And I'll read chapter 39, Brother Gary. Please read chapter 40. Then I'll read chapter 41 and then we'll go to Yahuwah in prayer. All right. Genesis chapter 39, the story of Joseph. In verse 1, it says here, And Yosef was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. Let me just uh, put this as a full screen. Just open your scriptures, please, so you still know how to open the scriptures. <laughs> verse 2. And uh, Yahuwah was with Yosef. In the Targum of Onkelis, it says the word of Yahuwah was his helper. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that Yahuwah was with him. In the Targum, it says his master saw that the word of Yahuwah was his helper. And that Yahuwah made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Now, why am I mentioning why am I uh, incorporating the Targum of Onkelos? I want you to understand that the word, all right, the word is already there in the book of Genesis. Verse 4, And Yosef found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that Yahuwah blessed the Egyptians' house for Yosef's sake. And the blessing of Yahuwah was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Very good verse to ponder upon later on. Verse 6, And he left all that he had in Yosef's hand, and he knew not what he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Yosef was a goodly person and well favored. Verse 7, And it came to pass after these things, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Yosef, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master woteth not what is with me in the house, or knoweth not. And he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. Verse 9, There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against Elohim? And it came to pass as she spake to Yosef day by day. So it, just, it was not just one day. It was not just one instance. It was day by day <clears throat> that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Yosef went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou was brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But Yahuwah was with Yosef and showed him mercy. Again, in the Targum of Onkelos, it says here, the word of Yahuwah was the helper of Yosef and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Yosef's hand 
all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. So basically, he knew how to obey. Verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because Yahuwah was with him and that which he did, Yahuwah made it to prosper. Brother Gary? Amen. Chapter 40, Genesis chapter 40, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in war. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man, his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning, and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward, of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed by dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not, do not interpretation belong to, to Elohim? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, to Joseph, and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine, were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossom shoot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hands. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it, that three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh leap up thine head, thine head and restore thee unto thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand. After the former manner, when thou wast with his, but, with, with, was his butler. But think on me when it shall be well with thee. And shew kindness, I pray thee, unto me. And make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, and he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket, there was of all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh. The birds did eat, did, did eat them out of the basket upon my head. Verse 18. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof that three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh leap up thy head from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree. And the bird shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, mm -hmm, that he made a feast unto all his servants and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butler's sheep Again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand, but he hung the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Thank you, Brother Gary. Chapter 41, verse 1. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kind, kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine, so Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears and seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. 
And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt, of Egypt and all the wise men thereof, and Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there, was, and there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew, a servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, he did interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Yosef, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Yosef, I have dreamed the dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand the dream to interpret it. And Yosef answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. Elohim shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Yosef, in my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kine, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kine did eat up the first seven fat kine, and when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them. But they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered thin and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians. But there was none that could declare it to me. And Yosef said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath shewed Pharaoh what uh, is one. God hath shewed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what Elohim is about to do, he sheweth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by Elohim, and Elohim will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be forestored to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the, and the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the spirit of Elohim is? And Pharaoh said unto Yosef, For as much as Elohim had shewed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Yosef, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Yosef's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen 
and put a gold chain about his neck, and he made him to ride in the second chariot, chariot which he had, and they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Yosef, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Yosef named Zaphnath Paanea, and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. And Joseph was, went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And Yosef gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. And unto Yosef were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, Pharaoh, priest of On, bare unto him. And Yosef called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for Elohim said, He hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house, and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. Very important names to look after later on. For Elohim hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Verse 53, and the seven years of plenteous that was in the land of Egypt were ended, and the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Yosef had said, and the dearth was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Yosef, what he saith to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Yosef opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians and the famines wax sore in the land of Egypt. Verse 57, And all countries came into Egypt to Yosef for to buy corn, because that the famine was sore in all lands. Was so sore in all lands. So basically, it was more about the whole earth. All right? So thank you uh, for the word of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah bless his word. Let's go to Yahuwah in prayer. Our Father, Yahuwah, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father, our Elohim, Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaqub, and our Elohim, the Mighty One, the Holy One, we bless you, we glorify you, we praise you this morning, and we thank you, Father, for this beautiful, full morning that you've given us. Thank you, Father, for this Friday where we can once again study your scriptures. Thank you, Father, for the presence of my brethren. And thank you, Father, for the word that we have just read this morning. Thank you, Father, for making us understand uh, the beauty of the story of Yosef and its relation to future events, its relation to Yahusha. And I pray, dear Father, whatever we discuss this morning will be beneficial to my brethren to our to our spiritual lives i pray dear father to continue to teach us your word and help us to understand the relevance of genesis in everything in everything that we read in your scriptures thank you father for this testimony i pray dear father let the holy spirit guide us into all truth give us wisdom and understanding uh, in uh, everything that uh, we'll tackle this morning and please organize my thoughts uh, our thoughts, whether Gary's thoughts, help us to understand, uh, explain this right. And we pray, dear Father, that you be magnified and that you be glorified in everything that we will be discussing this morning. Thank you so much, Father, for your word. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We magnify your word and your law. And all of these things we ask in your holy name, Yahuwah, in your son's name, Yahusha. Amen and amen. All right. So... Here's a beautiful story that we'll be studying, and I think we'll need to go back uh, a few chapters before so that we can see the, the contrast of what is happening. 
And uh, just a few uh, announcements. Tomorrow is our Sabbath service, and we'll continue on with the life of Yosef. Hopefully, we can finish it tomorrow. Um, everything, and uh, I really, we really want to do this recap so that those who are falling behind will get uh, all right, and uh, get more insights for those who are following us following our scripture studies, I hope that we all get on the same page, all right? And this morning, I also sent a message about the Amen and Amen. Feel free to research it on your own. But uh, oh, I prefer using Amen because if uh, you study it, again, Amen is coming, another is coming from a pagan goddess of Egypt, God of Egypt, all right? So, uh, we just really have to be careful with the words that we use. And if Yahuwah shows us these things, then let's uh, just, I, I encourage you to research it yourself so that you get to understand why we're using amen with the I, because it's uh, amen is slightly different from the word amen. But uh, I'm not condemning, condemning anyone who's using amen. I just want you to get a better understanding of how, why we should use it and maybe we don't even know what it means. <laughs> uh, in fact, if you read uh, the book of John has many amains, but we don't see it there because it's the verily, verily. All right. Verily, verily means amain, amain. And you can also see that in Deuteronomy chapter 27, I believe. All right. So let's go to our study, Genesis chapter 39. As I said, let's go back a few chapters earlier when... Uh, yeah, Yosef was hated by his brethren, all right? If you go back to chapter 37, this is the story where you can see that he, uh, Jacob loved his son Yosef very much. That is actually in verse 3. Now Israel loved Yosef more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And that coat will actually represent Israel, all right? That coat has significance because it has many colors and it, it he will represent Israel later on. As we have read in chapter 41, that his uh, faith has been turned from curse to blessing. Why? Because in the later verses of chapter 37, you could see here that his brothers envied him, his brothers hated him. And in verse 26, you can see the character of Yehuda here. He says, and Yehuda said unto his brethren, what prophet? Is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Verse 27, come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh and his brethren were content. So basically what happened here is uh, he gets thrown into a pit, he gets sold and um, he became a servant in Egypt as we have read in chapter 39. You can see here in chapter 39, that he was no longer living with his family. And as we have studied in our pre previous studies, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Yaqub, you could see those three houses that they were blessed by Elohim. All right? You could see that they had abundance. And parang napakahirap po, hindi parang, napakahirap po kay Yosef to be in a family where there is abundance. And then eventually you get sold by your uh brethren to the Midianites and the Midianites sell you to the Ishmaelites and the Ishmaelites sell you to Egypt and then you become a bandman and uh, I remember that feeling when I was in the COVID facility now you know the feeling that you had you were eating you were having enough in your life and then you go into the facility and you you you, ha you don't have your bed there you don't have access to all your clothes you don't have uh, access to a washing machine you don't have access to uh, cooking so these are all removed from you and you could I could feel I mean this is mas, mas pa nga tong kay Yosef, but I could feel his uh, depression I could feel his uh, his sadness in what was happening and if you go to the book of Yasher the the story in between chapter 37 and 39, you would see a story there that he was really crying all throughout his journey from, uh, from that place where they were to Egypt 
he was crying and the, the, the Midianites were beating him. But you would understand the agony that he was going through because at 17 years old, ako nga, 39 years old, I still felt the agony going to the facility. How much more that this man was traveling by foot, wala siyang bagahe, there was nothing with him, and he was going to be sold as a servant, and he was just crying out to Yahuwah, and uh, you could see, you would, un hopefully, we understand that he felt that he was cursed in, in that situation. And now, it's interesting that chapter 38 gets in the way and cuts the story of Yosef. Chapter 38 talks about Yehuda. But if you go to chapter 39, it will give you a direct contrast of the character of Yosef when Yosef uh, is tempted by, uh, what's his name, Potiphar, Potiphar's wife. All right? He will be tempted by Potiphar's wife, not like his brother Yehuda, who married the Canaanite, and when the Canaanite died, entered into what he thought, a harlot. So my, my, there's a, my fleshly instinct itong si, my fleshly immorality itong si Yehuda. All right? But in chapter 39, you could see here that Yosef was, uh, yun na, nakarating na siya sa Egypt in verse 1, was brought down to, to Egypt and Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites which had brought him down hither. So this is where Yosef starts being uh, a slave inside ng tahanan. Alright? So basically, naging household boy siya ni Potiphar. And uh, going to the story, if you go to verse 2, and I, I've told you, in the, the Targum of Onkelos, the word of Yahuwah was his helper. And so many times in the Targum of Onkelos. So you might be asking me the question. You might be asking yourself that question. Or you may have also researched it on your own. Let me give you an insight again about the Targum of Onkelos. The Targum of Onkelos is a, an account of Onkelos of the Torah. What is the Torah? The Torah is the first five books of the scriptures that you hold. So what is the first five books? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those are the English names. All right? So, if the Targum of Onkelos is the five fir first five books of the Torah, so basically the Targum of Onkelos is just a translation of the Torah. It's just like the King James. However, it was translated in Aramaic. All right, it was translated from to Aramaic. So this account was not found as Greek, was not found as Hebrew, but was found as an Aramaic account. All right, this was between 100 AD to 300 AD. So if this was the Torah, I believe that there are things that can be beneficial to us in this Targum because it's the same books that we're reading in our, what we call the Bibles, but it's an older account, all right? It's an older account because if it was written in Aramaic from 180 to 280 approximately, all right? Let me give that approximate. Your King James was translated at 1611. That's approximately 1,500 years. And what they say are very similar, okay? What they say in English are very similar. The only Differences are small words like the word of Yahuwah was their helper. And it makes a big impact for me who reads the scripture because knowing John 1.1, 1, 1, knowing the, uh, what John wrote when he said, in the beginning was the word and the word was Elohim and the word, the word was with Elohim and the word was Elohim, then you understand that this word that's that is described in the Targum, that is uh, mentioned in the Targum, is the same word that Yahukanon or John was talking about. Because in verse 2, it says here of chapter 39, and Yahuwah was with him. The word of Yahuwah was his helper. 
and he was prosperous. He was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now, let me ask you this question. What is the word of Yahuwah for us today? What do we claim to be the word of Yahuwah? We say it's this, right? This black book that I'm holding, we say this is the word. So basically, if the word of Yahuwah was Yosef's helper, my question to us today, what is our helper in our lives today? Knowing you don't see Yahuwah, you don't see Yahuwah, you, you just believe in him, but what will become our helper today? To understand who Yahuwah is, it's the word. Amen? Brother Gary, would you like to add anything? Uh, explain ko ng, ng konti sa Tagalog po para magkaintindihan ah. tayo mga kapatid. Alright. Uh, what, what Preacher MB is saying, ay, nag-English din ako. <laughs> <laughs> na uh, yung John 1.1 na lagi nating nababasa na in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Then you jump on verse 14 is and the Word was made flesh. Pag binasa nyo po yung Targum of Onkelos or Targum of Jonathan, alright, ano naman yung Targum? Yun po yung ina-explain ni Preacher na before nung meron tayo ngayon, yung 1611 na meron tayo, is nandyan na po yung Targum. Nauna pa po yung Targum bago itong 1611 translation. So, kung titingnan natin, is yung salita na ginagamit sa Targum, which is dun sa verse 2 na binanggit niya sa chapter 39, ang sinasabi po doon is, yung word mismo is the helper of Yosef. The word of Elohim or the word of God, it is the, he was the helper of Joseph. Katulong po siya ni Joseph sa yung kasakasama ni Joseph. Ngayon, mas madali nating maintindihan kasi pa nang sinabi ni Apostle John na the word was made flesh, e eh kasama ni, ni Joseph yun at nagkatawang tao sa panahon ni Apostle John, ni Apostle Matthew. Alright? So, makikita ninyo na Mas madaling maunawaan na yung word na meron tayo lahat ngayon is nagkatawang tao. It is the same. Parehas lang sila. Okay? So yun po yung, yung ina-explain nyo naman po na Torah uh, just to have and para magkaroon tayo ng isang pag-iisip. Yung tinatawag nating Old Testament is meron pong tatlong hati. Okay? From Genesis to Malakay, meron siyang tatlong hati. Tinatawag siyang Torah, tinatawag siyang Nivim, Navim, Nivim, o ang tinatawag siyang Kitovim. Alright, saan po natin makikita yun? Sinabi po yun ng Panginoong Yahusha sa Book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44, madali lang po siyang malala, 24:44. nang sabi ng Panginoong Yahusha, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, which is the Torah, yung first five books na tinatawag natin sa Greek na Pentateuch. Okay? Yan po yung alam natin dati. Pentateuch, Greek word po yun. The first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And sabi niya, and in the prophets, and in the prophets, definitely, sila Isaiah, Jeremiah, sila po yung tinutukoy dyan. And in the Psalms, ang tawag naman po doon is Kitovim, mga writings. So, ang, ang Old Testament na hati sa tatlo, the first is the Torah, the second is the Nevim, or the prophets, the writings of the prophets, and the third is Kitovim. Para iisa po yung pag-iisip natin, iisa yung pagkakaunawa natin. Ganun po hinati yung Old Testament. Ngayon, most of the time, nagtotora po tayo. Alright? Nagtotora tayo. Kaso gusto nating mainawaan yung, yung, yung first five books. Pero in an essence, yung Torah is comes from the root word Yara, Hebrew word Yara, which means instruction. Alright? So basically, yung whole book na to, yung buong libro na to, it is an instruction. So ito po yung dapat yung maunawaan natin ngayon. Okay? I hope na hindi ako nakadagdag sa pagkalito ninyo. <laughs> Amen. Alright, so 
Ito, tatagalugin ko para mas maintindihan din ninyo. Okay? So, thank you, Brother Gary, for that explanation. <laughs> Now, this is what... <laughs> tatagalugin ko nga. <laughs> Ito yung ina-explain ni Brother Gary. All right? The scriptures that you're holding is actually, dadagdagan ko, it's called the Tanakh. You can see here, Tanakh. If you read it downwards, it's called the Tanakh. All right? And we're talking about the Old Testament scriptures. I know we're, we're skipping away from our lesson, but let us just explain this. It's called the Tanakh. Why? Because it's an acronym of the Torah, which is the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Hindi ko muna sasabihin yung five books in Hebrew, but they're named differently. Maybe you don't know the Tanakh. You should know it because if you really want to understand who your Elohim is, where, which is written in my t-shirt, because a lot of people will ask me when they, when they see my shirt and ask who this is. If we truly believe in Yahweh, then you should understand what this means. Because this is the sacred name of your Elohim or your God or the If you believe in the Creator, this is His name in my T-shirt, all right? And if we don't know this, then there are a lot of things that we still need to learn. Let's not be settled with the Christian doctrines that we thought were correct. I mean, there are a lot of doctrines of Christianity that are correct. But let's put it into perspective because if we believe in one Elohim, in one God, then we should understand that these are the roots of what we are studying. Now, going back to our lesson, you have, pagbalik tayo sa ating lesson, we have the Tanakh, and then we have, meron tayong Torah. So the Torah is the first five books, and that's actually where you can find the history of Abraham, Isaac, Israel, And the story of the Israelites going into Egypt, going into captivity, and then going out of the captivity in Egypt, from Egypt na kung saan sila ay lalaya at sila ay mag-wonder sa promised land. There's a, mar, na malaki po ang, ang nais ipaunawa sa atin ng Panginoon with regards to these stories. That's why we're studying the history. Dahil mas mauunawaan natin ang buong scriptures if we fully understand what's written in the Torah. Just like what Brother Gary said, the Torah are the instructions. Nebim are the prophecies, all right? Or the prophets. That's where you can find uh, Isaiah, Isaiah, <laughs> Isaiah, Jeremiah. Lamentation is not uh, a prophet, but it's written by Jeremiah. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, all of the prophets, they are Nanevi'im. Prophecies concerning Israel and concerning the future world to come. Ketuvim are the writings. Ano yung writings? Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Wisdom of Sirach, Ecle uh, Song of Solomon, Yob, Yob is part of the writings. Wisdom of Solomon. So these are the writings that uh, uh, that's mentioned by Yahusha in Luke 24:44. Yeah, sinabi niya, go to the law of Moses, which is the Torah, and the prophets and the writings. So this is the Tanakh. Alam ang alam natin Old Testament, New Testament. Yan ang alam natin. Na westernized na kayo. <laughs> na Hellenized na kayo. Na tayo. Na, na, na Hellenized na tayo. And we have to go back to the Hebrew roots to understand what Yahuwah really wants us to learn. So, dapat hindi na iba sa atin yung Tanakh. And I'll be honest with you, I just learned this word Tanakh this year. In my 39 years of existence in this earth, I just learned Tanakh. At ngayon pa lang natin, natin tunay na, na nauunawaan ang salita ng Panginoon. Alright? So, this is what we, were, we are trying to explain na maakustom ma na tayo doon sa mga terms na ginagamit ni Brother MB, ni Brother Gary 
And going back to the Targum, the Targum is actually another translation of the Torah. Because your King James is already a translation. It's no longer the original. That's why you cannot say it's perfect. Because it's just a translation of a translation of a translation. So I hope that makes it clear. And going back, balik tayo sa Genesis chapter 39. Hoping we can finish all of what we just read. <laughs> sa mga side trip natin. Sabi ni Brother Gary, or sabi ni John in John 1.14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Nagkatawang tao itong Word. If you go back to Genesis chapter 39, and the Word of Yahuwah was His helper, hindi po ito nagkatawang tao. Ito po yung mga inutos sa kanya ng kanyang ama, na tinuro sa kanya ng kanyang ama bago po siya mawalay doon sa presensya ng kanyang ama at maging slave. And it was actually the word of Yahuwah that gives him encouragement in his life. So if his father taught him not to commit adultery, pinanghawakan niya yun. If he, his father taught him not to commit bribery, pinanghawakan niya yun. If his father taught him to keep his integrity, pinanghawakan niya yun. And that made him a prosperous man. And it should be the same with us. Na kapag nag-aaral po tayo ng salita ng Panginoon, kung anong natututunan natin, i-apply natin sa ating buhay because the word, this word that we're studying, the wisdom that we're getting from it will be our helper whatever happens in our life. Tama? Brother Gary, meron ka bang gusto sabihin? Alright. So, you could see here that verse 2, Yahuwah, the word of Yahuwah, was his helper. And what happened to him? It was his uh, prosperity. And because he trusted in the word of Yahuwah, in verse 3, nakita po yun ng kanyang amo. Nakita yun ng kanyang master na masunurin siya, na honest siyang tao, na siya po ay uh, masipag, kumilos. These are all parts of the Torah that we should just uh, be, alam yan, what your hands find to do, you should do it with all your might. In uh, verse 3, you can see that the master saw the testimony of Yosef. And it says here, and he served him and he made him overseer over his house. So this did not happen overnight. Matagal po ito nangyari. Okay? Matagal to. Remember, he was, how, how old was he when he was taken out of his father's house when he was sold. 17. Okay? So mamaya makikita natin kung gano'n na siya katanda nung siya po ay nag in Egypt. Because as you see here later on, you would see the turn of events where the, the curse has been made into a blessing. His discouragements in life molded, molded him to be a better person. Okay? So makikita natin dito sa kwento in verse 5, and it came to pass from the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that Yahuwah blessed the Egyptian's house. Now, one, one person that I always remember in following Yahuwah and his house becomes blessed was Obededom when he took the Ark of the Covenant, which we'll study later on. So, makikita po natin dito sa kanyang paglilingkod sa Panginoon, sa kanyang uh, masipag na pag... Uh, Deal sa kanyang master, his master saw that and the promotion was given to him because of his testimony. Our obedience in Yahuwah in being humble and obedient to our earthly masters can be turned into a blessing for us. Because Yahuwah knows everything that is happening in our life. That's why we have to be a blessing everywhere Yahuwah puts us. We have to be a blessing at home. We have to be a blessing at work. Let's not compromise the things that we're learning na hindi porket hindi nakikita ni Brother MB, ay nakikita po kayo ng Panginoon. And there are a lot of people like that today. They think that if the church does not see me or the ecclesia does not see me, I can do this and that. I hope that I hope and pray that all of us will learn how to just follow the Torah in whatever situation we are. Let's just continue observing what Yahuwah commands us na kahit sinong nakakakita sa atin, 
because it's our testimony on the line. Testimony po natin ang nakikita ng bawat tao. Kasi we have this uh, alibi na, ay hindi naman yung Kristiyano eh, kaya okay lang. Hindi naman yung nag-church sa amin, kaya okay lang. Hindi naman niya alam kung anong mga gawin namin, kaya okay lang. Remember, our testimony is what will show other people why we are truly set apart, why we are different, why we are sanctified. So what if they if they mock us, then just stay faithful. If they if they try to allure us, inuman tayo. If they try to uh, pull us out, na wala naman mangyari yan kung yahua yahua kayo. Tapos alam niyo, walang mangyari sa yung. There are a lot of people who will tell you that. Just stay faithful and just keep knowing who your savior and master is. All right. So, brother Gary, anything? Buloy. Uh, I think uh, doon sa sinasabi ni Sir na we keep our testimony. Kasi makita niyo po rito sa story sa verse 5. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that Yahuwah blessed the Egyptian's house for Yosef's sake. And the blessing of Yahuwah was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. So makikita niyo po dyan kung paano binibless ng Panginoon yung marama tao na marunong sumunod. Including kasama po ah all right, including yun sa kung saan lugar siya nandoon or kung anong kung yung tahanan niya. All right, kaya nga po makikita natin sa buhay natin na dapat matuto tayong sumunod. And it, yung lalo na po sa mga tatay, lalo na sa katulad nating mga tatay kasi we are it's been said na tayo yung leader ng pamilya. It's been said na tayo dapat yung nagdadala sa pamilya. So dapat tayo mismo makitaan ng karakter ng mga natututunan po natin. That's right. right? And the rest will follow. And the rest will follow. If you are a leader, dapat makita sa iyo yon para yung buong sambahayan mo makasunod sa Panginoon. Mahirap po magturo. Mahirap pagsabi, anak, huwag kang manigarilyo kung ikaw na ninigarilyo. Right. Anak, masama sa katawan niyang uminom, lalo na ngayon, palakasin natin katawan natin, palakasin, palakasin natin immune system natin kasi may corona, pero ikaw, uminom. ba? So, pangit po yun. So, I hope and pray, the same as sa, sa, sa scripture reading. Anak, basa na. Ano, ilan ang nabasa mo ngayon? Pero ikaw, wala ka nabasa. Masakit po yun na yung, yung, yung alam natin na tayo, pero hindi naman talaga yun yung ginagawa natin. The scriptures call it Hypocrites. Hey, <laughs> All right. Sir. All right. So you could see here, nakikita po natin dito that his Egyptian master trusted him kasi alam nung Egyptian master niya na itong taong to may takot. Hindi lang natatakot basta-basta sa tao but pero may takot siya sa Panginoon or sa, in, a, in a higher being that w wherein you could see here that in verse 6 that his master left all that he had in Joseph's hand. Pinagkatiwalaan po siya. And if you notice, if we, uh, as we have read verse chapter 40, makikita natin, yung kanyang pag-anga ay unti-unting pinopromote ng Panginoon. Dito, kanino siya naging, sino, saan siya naging uh, ruler? He was the ruler of the house. He was the second man of the house. Siya po yung naging ruler ng mga kasambahay. All right. In verse 7, onwards, ito na. Temptation comes. All right. Yahuwah has promoted him, but temptation comes. And that temptation, which usually we all get tempted on this, we were tempted by this, and it's the temptation of the world in our present world. You watch Facebook, you go to Facebook, or you, you watch, you alam niyo yung sa Facebook, pag ini-scroll, scroll mo yon. may mga susulpot na ganito, mga temptation of the lust of the flesh. And who tempted him? The master's wife. So, actually, lalo na sa mga Pilipino ngayon, ay, pambira. Sa kwentuhan lang ng mga Pilipino ngayon, hindi mangyayari to. Etong ginawa ni Joseph na to na pagtalikod sa master's wife niya, hindi mangyayari to sa mga sa ugaling Pilipino ngayon ng mga ng mga hindi mananampalataya. The most of I would say 80% of men or maybe not higher than that, higher percentage would give in to this. Bakit? Walang tao sa bahay at that time. All right, there was nobody there. It says here in a uh, 
uh, where's that? In verse 11, it says in the last part, and there was none of the men of the house there within. Actually, uh, meron nakasulat in the oral Torah, or when you say oral Torah, hindi na po ito yung nakasulat, oral nga eh. <laughs> So ito yung pasa-pasa na kwento. It was actually uh, around Christmas time. Right? It was Christmas time and more about the uh, the fertility goddess. So parang yung katulad ko, if you remember the story of Shechem, uh, naglabasan sila Dina to see the party going on. So may fiesta, may, there was festivities. That's why the men, all of the men of the house were not in the, in the house because it was uh, said that it was a festival of parang ubando, parang uban, sayaw sa ubando, di ba? Yung magsasayaw, tapos manunood yung mga tao. So all the men were out. So ang natira lang doon was the wife of Potiphar. Tama ba? Potiphar nga ba? The wife of Potiphar. And if you read the book of Yasher, unang-una, sobrang guwapo po ni Yosef. Sobrang guwapo. Kaya gustong-gustong kunin siya ng mga Midianites. Kasi sabi nila, may pagkakagabay pag mapapakinabang natin itong kagwapuhan na to. Hindi lang siya sobrang guwapo. Patay na patay itong wife of Potiphar. Alright? She was deeply uh, crushed <laughs> with his uh, handsomeness. So makikita po natin dito, as I mentioned earlier, I emphasized in verse 10, that day by day, Okay, day by day, I inaakit na itong si Yosef. But you could see here that Yosef kept the word of his father and of the word of Yahuwah because if Yaakob taught him, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not fornicate. And that command also na hindi ka dapat mag-aasawa ng, ng mga iba. So that stuck in his mind, especially he will be committing adultery in this one because this was his master's wife. Now, you could see that he would eventually escape this. But what would happen to Anong mangyayari sa kanya? What will happen to him? He did not compromise his integrity. Okay? And Elohim knows that. El Elohim, God knows everything that we are doing. Okay? And as you can see, this may be a tragic moment for Yosef. Bakit? Later on, as you read along, in verse 20, Yosef master took him and put him into the prison. Okay? And I always remember, pag nababasa ko yung story of Yosef, I remember my uncle for being put in prison for uh, misjudgment na they committed murder. Uh, may kaso po yung tito ko about uh, murdering someone against committing suicide but you still stay on the right you still say what the truth is what really happened pero ang kalaban po niya kasi dito is the master's wife okay the master's wife and sino nga ba siya ano lang naman siya servant lang siya so you could see that he we could we can see here in the story that this was something depressing again this was something that can will discourage us but you know what? what was, who was his helper? In verse 21, it says in the Targum of Onkelos, the word of Yahuwah was the helper of Yosef. Dito po sa King James natin, ano nakasulat? There's nothing wrong with what's written in the King James. It says here, but the Lord was Yosef. But, but the Lord was with Yosef. Pero if I, I use the Targum of Onkelos, it gives you a better perspective because you have this black book with you. And then when you read it, the word of Yahuwah was his helper. Kung ilalagay mo into perspective in our generation, in our life today, the word of Yahuwah will be your, your helper. Maraming tao ngayon ang nanghihina sa kanilang buhay espiritual. A lot of people will say, wala kasing church, wala kasing, wala kasing fellowship. Diba? Nang hihina tayo. Remember, the word of Yahuwah is more important. I am not saying that fellowship is not important, but this is the most important book that you have right now that will make you prosperous, that will encourage you, that will help you in troublous times, that will 
uh, teach you. Katulad nga, let's go back to what uh, we read in uh, Sirach chapter 4. Sirach chapter 4. We studied this last, uh, remember we studied this last Wednesday. If you go to verse verse 17 for us first she will walk with him on tortuous paths she will bring fear and cowardice upon him and will torment him by her discipline until she trusts him and she will test him with her ordinances verse 18 then she will come straight back to him and gladden him and will reveal her secrets to him now you could see this in the life of Yosef makikita po natin to sa buhay ni Yosef that yes, Yosef was simply being refined by the master. What? So that he could be fit for perfect use later on. From being a slave in chapter 41 to being Lord over the land of Egypt, not only over the land of Egypt, but over all the earth. Kasi sabi dun, all lands. Makikita nyo kung paano siya dinidevelop? E tayo, konting, konting trial lang sa ating buhay. Puro reklamo na tayo. Puro, uh, ano yun, tatalikod na tayo sa Panginoon. We will do our own business. We will do our own ways. We will find our, our own kung paano tayo didiskarte sa ating sarili. Remember, what Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in Yahuwah with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Paano ko yun gagawin, Brother MB? Start reading scripture. Start understanding these stories. Because Yosef did not stay in prison for one year or two years or three years. He actually stayed in prison in chapter 40. He stayed in prison for 12 years. Brother MB, sa chapter 41, sabi dito, at the end of two full years. Ten years na po siya sa prison bago niya nakausap yung dalawang dreamer. All right. So in chapter 40, you, we see here, uh, I'll, I'll just go to chapter 39 and I'll end that chapter in verse 21. But the word of Yahuwah was the helper of Yosef and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So makikita nyo yung succession of events. You can see in uh, the first part that he was a servant of the house. And then he gets maligned. He he's blasphemed. Uh, he's not blasphemed. He's uh, he was slandered by the mistress of his master. And ano nangyari? Ay pinakulong. Tama pa kaya tong ginagawa ko? Diba? We have that question in our mind. Am I still doing the right things? Why is not Yahuwah blessing me? Look at the long term. And look at this story because this story did not just happen overnight. He was sold at 17 years of age he became ruler of egypt at 30 years old so that's approximately 13 years of suffering suffering in his uh having promotion in his master house and then akala mo tapos na akala mo ay siguro maluwag na ang buhay ngayon and then what happens eto na may temptation and then he he eventually ends up in jail di ba and you could see here in verse 15 of chapter 40, uh, let's go to verse 14. It says here, But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and shew kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention unto me, unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. So you understand na hindi madali ang buhay sa presinto. In verse 15, sinasabi niya dito, For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. He knows his history well. Sabi niya, anong nangyari? I binenta ako eh, from, from the land of the Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. Una, naging slave ako. Ngayon, nakakulong ako. Panginoon, palala na ng palala. Do you think that was the attitude of Yosef? No, it was not his attitude. What his attitude was, he just kept on trusting on the word of Yahuwah. And why am I emphasizing on the word of Yahuwah? Because you have the word of Yahuwah. The question is, are we trusting the word? Because you cannot trust the word, first of all, if you have not read the word. And if, if you, we have not read the word, we will not understand the word. 
Huwag kayong umasa sa turo ni Brother MB so or sa kahit anong sa I'm not saying that our our presence will not help you but I what I'm saying is trust more in this word. Mahirap unawain. That's where we come in. But you have to strive. You your responsibility is for you to grow in this word. Brother MB kasi sabi mo hindi na yan perfect. Well, it's where I grew. It's where I've known who Yahuwah is. And you, we will not reach that point to know Yahuwah if we're not digging into the Word. So you can see uh, sa ating pag-aaral na itong life ni Yosef is a really good example in understanding that we should be trusting the Word more than the doctrines of men. Brother Gary? Alright. Uh... I hope nakikita niyo po yung 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 importansya nitong pinag-aaralan natin. Okay? I'll just go back a bit sa verse sa chapter 39 verse 21. Ang sabi niya po rito, napaka-importante ng verse. But Yahuwah was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. After nung temptation na na na, na nalagpasan niya after nung pagbenta sa kanya, ang sabi po ng scriptures, Yahuwah is with Joseph and what and gave him favor and showed him mercy. So kung tinitingnan po natin yung scripture natin or yung mga naituro sa atin na yung mercy is sa old sa New Testament nangyari. Look at this verse. Mercy is there already. Okay? Nandiyan na po yung pagmamahal at awa ng Panginoon. That's the first thing na makita natin dito sa story natin. Another thing na gusto kong makita niyo mga kapatid is in verse 2 na emphasize kanina na Yahuwah or the word of Yahuwah is with Joseph. Okay? And despite all those things na naranasan niya, his integrity, he stayed sa mga natutunan niya po. Alright. Now, if we can write it sa ating, pang- sa ating buhay ngayon, dito sa mga naranasan nating problema ngayon, hindi tayo makalabas, walang trabaho, maraming mga problema sa kumpanya, maraming problema sa health, hindi na nakakapagtipon sa simbahan, hindi na nakakapunta nakaka, o nakakapagtipon physically. And ngayon po, hindi po natin alam kung talagang nakikinig or just naka-online lang or kung ano yung ginagawa natin. I mean, dapat maintindihan natin yan ang integritan natin. Hindi natin nakikita between us. But there is one God that can see kung ano yung ginagawa natin sa panahon ngayon, sa oras ngayon. Nakikinig ba talaga tayo? Naghahanap ba talaga tayo? Naiintindihan ba talaga natin? Baka kasi dumadating tayo sa point na, alright, I'll just put it online and mamaya na lang may marami pa akong gagawin or may mga iba pa akong gagawin. No. Mga kapatid, dapat maintindihan natin sa buhay natin, dapat may salita ng Panginoon. At kapag oras po ng pag-aaral, give it to Yahuwah. Tomorrow will be, tonight will be our Sabbath day. Okay? And I hope anpoy na nauunawaan na po natin yun kung ano, kung ano po yung tamang pagsunod. Kasi mahirap po na hindi na nga tayo nagkakasama-sama physically. But then, yung instead na mas matutunan natin yung salita ng Panginoon is bumabaksak yung, yung standard natin. Imbis na mas lalong tumatag is bumabaksak yung standard natin. Nag-aaral na tayo ng nakasando. Nag-aaral na tayo ng naka, kung ano-anong pinagagawa natin. ba? Diba? Eh, hindi po yun yung tinuturo sa atin ng Panginoon. Dapat mas lalo ngayon na tumatag at mas lalo ngayon na tumibay yung pananiwala natin at yung pagkakaunawa natin. Mahirap na ay alam ko na yung history. Pero yung ugali ko nag-iba. Nananambahan na ako ngayon ng nakahiga. Ay mahirap po yun. Kasi wala namang nakakakita sa akin. Remember, there is one God that can see us. Alright? That's the thing. Here's another thing na gusto ko pong matutunan natin. Spiritually, yung, remember na alam niyo po yung comparison natin, Joseph and Yahushua. Okay? In here, in chapter 39, verse 11 to 12, ang sabi po dyan, and it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house. This is the thing na tinetempt po siya ng asawa ni Potiphar, ng kanyang master. And if you go to Yasser account, sa, sa, sa book po ng Yasser, makikita niyo po kung sino yung pangalan nung nung asawa si Sil, Silica po okay yung asawa ni Potiphar it is in Yasser chapter 44 basahin niyo na lang po si Silica yung pangalan ng asawa so sinasabi rito ang comparison niyan ang paralel niyan sa panganaw sa panahon ng Panginoong Yahusha Yahusha was tempted three times at ano po ang sagot niya 
it is written. It is written. Kapag ikaw natitemp, go back to the scriptures. It is written kung ano ang dapat mong gawin. Go back to the instruction. It is written kung ano ang dapat mong gawin. Alright? So yun po yung mga comparison na makikita natin. What else? Yung grinab ni... Ano ang naiwan nung patakas na si Joseph? Yung kanyang garments. Yung, yung kanyang clothes. Alright? Ano ang parallel niyan sa panahon ng Panginoong Yahusha? When he was executed on the tree, ano ang ginawa nung mga, nung, nung mga nag-execute sa kanya? He grabbed his garment. Alright? Yung garment na iwan, but yung flesh, umakit sa langit. Yung Panginoon umakit sa langit. Yung garment na iwan, but his integrity was there. Alright? So I hope na nakikita natin yung mga parallel na ito. Okay? Sir? Alright. So, thank you Brother Gary. Let's go back to chapter 40. So this is the story. Sabi ko sa inyo, he was 12 years in prison. And on his 10th year, makikita po natin dito, we'll see here that uh, in verse uh, 7, uh, verse 5, may mga nanaginip po doon sa kulungan at mga bagong salta. Di ba? Mga bagong salta. So, nung umaga, in verse 6, it says here, And Yosef came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. <laughs> And alam niyo na naginip kayo tapos feeling niyo it just brought your spirits down when you wake up you 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 feel that you woke up on the wrong side of the bed so that's how they felt parang hindi maganda yung paraginip namin so in verse 8 here's something interesting that uh uh Joseph would say in verse 8 and they said unto him we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpreted interpreter of it and Joseph said unto them do not interpretations belong to Elohim now very good phrase here that Joseph says because in everything that he does remember he was a dreamer he was a dreamer although I'm not I'm I don't know if he could interpret his dreams but uh, he was in that process of understanding what his dream was when he was young but here you could see that even in the dreams of interpretations, he gave glory to Yahuwah. There are a lot of people today who say they can interpret dreams and they say, Gif ko to eh. Gif ko na magkaroon ako na, na ma-interpret ko yung mga panaginip. There's a big difference to giving glory to Yahuwah in interpreting dreams and people who claim that they have gifts of interpreting dreams. Kasi dito pa lang, and even if you go to chapter 41, he would immediately acknowledge Yahuwah in interpreting the dream of Yahuwah, uh, of the of Pharaoh, he would say, it's of Yahuwah. All of these things that you dream of is of Yahuwah, and sinabi pa niya na this, your dream is one, because Yahuwah gives, em want to emphasize, and uh, we'll go to that later on. So here's the dream. May dalawang panaginip. So the first dream was about the butler in verse 10. Uh, verse 9, it says here, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossom shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into the Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Verse 12, And Yosef said unto him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days, yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. So you can see here that he was able to interpret by Yahuwah's wisdom. And in verse 14, sabi niya, but think on me when it shall be well with thee. Wag mo kong kakalimutan. And shew kindness, I pray thee unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. Now, fast forward to chapter 41. It took two years before this butler thought on Joseph. Two, dalawang taon. At hindi yun madali. Kasi after three days, what will happen? He gets, uh, he gets freedom. The butler gets freedom. 
And ikaw, kung ikaw si Joseph, ay sana, sana maalala niya. Sana makalabas ako agad. Sana lumipas ang isang linggo, lumipas ang isang buwan, lumipas ang kalahating taon, lumipas ang isang taon, walang nangyari. And there are a lot of times where we think Yahuwah has forgotten us. There are a lot of times when we can be this depressed na alam mo yun, both of his interpretations came true. Why? Because the second one, the, the baker naman, ano nangyari? Yung dream niya, tungkol sa tinapay naman, may arrow, she note forth yung arrow, and then eventually, sabi niya, anong mangyayari sa'yo? Ikaw ay mamamatay. And both of, both of the dreams happen. Yung parehong panaginip po nangyari. And what we can learn from this is that purification of Yahuwah takes time. It takes patience. Imagine, he was 12 years in prison. In his 10th year, where he thought that he would finally be released because he gave this uh, prophecy or this interpretation to the butler. And eventually, nakalimutan ng butler. But remember, lahat ng bagay nangyayari with a purpose. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Elohim. For we know that all things work together for good. So if you love Elohim, all things work together for good. It may not look well. 13 years in captivity, slave, nakulong ka pa. Pero anong nangyari? Pati sa kulungan, pinromote ka ng Panginoon. Di ba? Pati sa kulungan, <laughs> mayordomo ka. Parang si J.B. Sebastian. <laughs> di ba? <laughs> Nakita niyo ba yung kwarto ni J.B. Sebastian? <laughs> na, nabu, nabuhay lang yung uli yung mga video ni J.B. Sebastian lately. <laughs> And he had like an office <laughs> inside his uh, baluarte. Now, what I'm saying is, it's Yahuwah who gives the promotion. I'm just uh, uh, putting it uh, as an example that at, even in prison, he was made higher than the prisoners. And you can see how Yahuwah molds him. Una, saan siya, saan siya naging mataas sa mga servants ni Potiphar. And then, you go in chapter 40, saan siya naging mas mataas. Ah, naging, naging mas mataas siya ngayon sa preso. Actually, mas mataas ang posisyon niya doon ngayon. Dati kasi sa bahay lang. In chapter 41, as we go through this, you will see that Yahuwah made, molded him into a better person, has purified him because he will put him in a position where he never thought he would be. Isipin mo, bininta ka tapos after 13 years, you realized you are already the Lord of the land. Yeah? So in verse 23 of chapter 40, it says here, Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. And a lot of times, we become impatient in life. Yeah? Yeah, Brother Gary, just keep on. Na, hindi natin alam kung gaano katagal yung sahod nyo. Ako din, I, I didn't know that that how long I would suffer, how I, I suffered uh, two years of having delayed sal salaries. And until now, I'm still waiting for a salary from that company. <laughs> but I have always trusted because whenever that my previous company would pay, it was always the right time. It was always the right time. And you know when he paid me last for a month? He paid me last, last March, February or March before the lockdown happened. And after that, we, we had salary cuts that helped us through the whole lockdown process. And, and you, and as I look back, I see Yahuwah's hand working behind the scenes in all this. Why? Because he sees the whole picture. For us, we only see the short term. I hope as we read the scriptures, we understand that he sees the whole picture. He actually laid out 7,000 years, a planned 7,000 years already. And he has fulfilled the almost 6,000 years of what he has wrote down. Tapos tayo pa ngayon ang mag, mag, magkikwestiyon sa Panginoon. Why is this happening in my life? Why am I being impatient? Let's be like Joseph 
where he has been truly purified by Yahuwah in the things that happened to his life and eventually later on in his life. Makikita natin yung promotion ng Panginoon. All right, before I jump to chapter 41, Brother Gary, anything you would like to add? All right. Ay, nakita niyo po kung gaano katagal yung nangyayari. It took him 12 years na, nakik- na ina-explain ni Preacher. 12 years! How long we've been here in this COVID-19? Six months? Seven months? And yet, napakarami na nating question marks. And yet, napakarami na nating doubts. 12 years, mga kapatid, yan po ang tinuturo sa atin. Right? I'm not saying naabot ito ng 12 years kung saan man ito aabot. But what we're trying to say is, take something or matuto tayo. 12 years, within 6 months, ano ang blessing na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon? Joseph was promoted. Within 6 months, mga kapatid, you learn. We learn the Torah. We starting learning the Torah. Within 6 months, Imagine for 12 years, what else can Yahusha, kung buhay pa tayo sa panahon na yun, imagine after 12 years, what else Yahusha, Yahua will show us. Alala niyo yung sa Sirach, He will show us secrets. Marami pa tayong matututunan. Get excited mga kapatid. Maging excited tayo sa araw-araw na, sa, sa pag-aaral natin. Kaya nga dapat pag mayroong gawain ganito, nandito tayong lahat. Excited tayong makinig. Excited tayong ano na naman ang ituturo sa akin ng Panginoong Yahua ngayon. It's not our message. It's not preacher, preacher in this message, mga kapatid. Tanak, natutunan natin ngayong araw yun. Ay, yun pala yun. Torah. Nabihim. Tsaka kitubim. Hindi natin alam yun dati. Ano naman kaya bukas ang ituturo sa atin? Get excited. Be always sa gawain ng Panginoon kapag oras po ng gawain. Amen. Six months, napakarami nating, napakaraming binigay ng Panginoon sa atin. Watch out after 12 years. Amen. Uh, as you six months, only six months, have we truly used that time efficiently to know Yahuwah? Because a lot of us will procrastinate. Ah, malalaman ko din yan later on. Ah, tsaka ko na yan malalaman. So, if we are procrastinating, ano yung procrastinate? Yung, you're putting aside the things that you can do today. And if we can learn the Torah today, why not? If we can learn these stories today, why not? Because as you have seen, I know this is already a compressed version of Yosef's life. But if you see in chapter 39, 40, and 41, there were a lot of things that Yosef went through. And a lot of them were injustices. Yung unfair, di ba? Bakit ako, bakit ako dumadanas ng mga ganito? Mabait naman ako, Panginoon, eh, di ba? There, there are a lot of times where we think injustices, hindi tama yung nangyayari sa buhay ko. Naglilingkod naman ako sa Panginoon. Let me ask you that question. How long have you been serving Yahuwah? How long have you been following the commandments? And if Yahuwah is trying to mold us into be a better person, we should see that. Because the injustices of life we should see it as purification processes for us. Kung hindi tayo sumasahod, let's see it as purification processes. Instead of being more worldly, I believe that we should all be spiritual. If we're, kung hindi tayo sumasahod, kung wala tayong trabaho, alam mo yun, kung nagkaroon ka ng COVID-19, let's use those opportunities to see what is Yahuwah teaching me. Doon tayo, dapat doon tayo magduel. Hindi yung nagmumukmuk tayo, hindi yung nag, uh, alam mo yun, tumatalikod tayo sa Panginoon and then eventually, what will happen? Hindi na kasi ako nag-church kaya hindi na ako na, alam mo yun, hindi na ako spiritual. Wala na, wala na akong gana. Is it really my fault? Is it Brother Gary's fault? Is it the church's fault? Or is it our fault because we're not being purified? Nakikita niyo yung tanong? Ay, yung, yung, yung point? Going back to the wisdom of Sirach, anong sabi niya dito? In verse 18, uh, will he will reveal her secrets to him. In verse 19, if he goes astray, she will forsake him and hand him over to his ruin. What I posted earlier, remember, yung a soul that sinneth, it shall die. And if a wicked will turn from his wickedness and turn to righteousness, he shall live. But if the righteous will turn to 
from his righteousness and turn to his wickedness, he shall die. Na pag-isipan natin to, verse 19, if he goes astray, she will forsake him. A lot of us want insurance. Once save, always save. Gusto ko insured ako na pag tinanggap ko ang Panginoon ngayon, gusto ko habang buhay, ligtas na ako. And then you do whatever you want in your life. Are you truly following Yahuwah? Are you truly following righteousness? Or you just want that insurance that you will be saved later on? Why don't we work? I'm not talking about work salvation, but why don't we show respect to the one who saved us? Why don't we honor His word? Why don't we obey His laws? Because in Exodus, it does say that there's only one law for the stranger and for, for the Israelite. So kung iisa lang ang batas ng Panginoon, anong nangyari sa New Testament? Di ba? We, we just have to think of these things about one save, always save doctrine. And if you have questions, just feel free to ask. Hindi, yung, hindi na yan naniniwala sa one save, always save. So, uh, alis na tayo dyan. Well, We'll, we'll see later on in the finals. So finals din tayo magkikita-kita eh. When all, thing, all of these things will come to pass, then we will all understand ano ba talaga ang tama? Those people who stuck with the word of Yahuwah. Alright? So, let's go back to chapter 41. Chapter 41. So, here, you can see Pharaoh dreams, two dreams. And it says in verse 1, it came to pass at the end of two full years. As I've said, it's been 12 years. So after the 10th year, the te- on the 10th year, he interpreted the two prisoners. And another, compar- another uh, parallel to Yahusha, there were two prisoners beside Yahusha on the yeah. cross. Right? Two thieves, two male factors. Yeah? And in this story, in chapter 40, you could see one died and one lived physically. Later on, if you read in the book of Luke, I believe it's Luke chapter 16, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, Luke, cha- chapter? Luke chapter 23. 23. Luke chapter 23. 23. Ba? All right. You would see there two male factors, malefactors. One died physically, uh, spiritually. One lived spiritually. In sabi niya, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Ano sabi ng Panginoon? Today. <laughs> Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Yan yung may maling coma na naliligaw. Alright? Kaya nagkaroon ng doktrina na ngayon dadaling kita sa aking paraiso. <laughs> Para, para iso, yung doctrinal sa langit. <laughs> Alright, so uh, you could see that parallel. And then in verse 41, as we go through this story, you understand, we understand that Yahuwah made the interpretation of dreams happen in chapter 39 two years before. Because two years after the perfect time, where he needed to interpret a dream. And that dream was the dream of the ruler of the land, Pharaoh. Yeah? And there's a, a good story also in the book of Yasher. I'll let you read it. Because my, my question, why did he agad si Pharaoh kay, kay Joseph? Yeah? And the book of Yasher will, uh, will explain that uh, further. But you can see here that when Pharaoh dreamed that dream, what was his dream? Seven, seven well-favored kind and seven ill-favored kind. And the ill-favored ate the seven well-favored. And hindi naman sila lumakas after that. So may, may pitong ang kain babaka. Di ba? Ang kain baka. So kinain nung naging devourer yung seven kain na payat at uh, gutom na gutom <laughs> so, sobrang gutom nila kinain nila yung mga magagandang kain and there was another story okay another story about uh, corn ears of corn may magaganda din and uh, yung ears of corn were blasted all right to the by the east wind 
and that sprung up after them. That is in verse 6. And verse 7, And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. So para siyang, para siyang uh, weeds, pero corn shop na dinivar niya yung magaganda. So the, the Pharaoh was troubled. And to think, the Pharaoh, kung iisipin nyo, in Exodus, the Pharaoh had a lot of magicians. So he had interpreter of dreams. And he had a lot of people. Bakit ka naman makikinig dito sa galing sa kulungan agad? Di ba? Sino ba tong galing sa kulungan? So he had uh, interpreters around him, but because of because that dream was so important to him. Alam niyo yun, may, may feeling siya na hindi tama yung mga ini-interpret nitong mga, mga magicians niya. So, at this time, we see there in verse 9 of chapter 41, Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Sabi niya, Sandali, may, may pagkakamali ako. Sabi niya, I do remember the faults this day. And he remembered his debt of gratitude to Yosef. And kung, sa, sa palagay niyo, kung lumabas siya na mas maaga, magiging ruler ba siya? I don't think so. I believe that everything is happening with a purpose because Yahuwah has put him in all of these situations, in all of these injustices. So that when, when he is totally molded into the image that he wants him to be, then he can put him in that position where he has magnified him. All right? He has magnified Yosef. And you could see that parallel with Yahusha as well. Because Yahusha would be, will be later on, you would see that he will be the ruler. And the only one above him will be Yahuwah. Okay, makikita nyo yung parallel na yan. Because here in the story, you will see that he became ruler of all the land. And what did Pharaoh tell him? Pharaoh told him that in verse 38, you can see, And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the spirit of Elohim is? And in verse 40, Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Remember, as we read earlier, you can see that, we could see that his interpretation of dreams, ano sabi niya? Seven years, there will be fruitfulness. But after that seven years, there will be famine. And in, in the book of Yasher, he did give uh, an ultimatum. Uh, he said, your son will die. And this is confirmation of the dream. And eventually, Pharaoh's son died. Kasi nga, hindi nga siya naniniwala dun sa mga magicians. Eh. But when he saw that this prophecy, this uh, interpretation, pwede rin naman siyang hindi maniwala dito. But he gave that, that ultimatum. And eventually, it happened. And it became known to Pharaoh that this man has wisdom coming from Yahuwah. In verse 28, going back to verse 28, you see here, this is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what Elohim is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. So you can see here that uh, Pharaoh is still attributing everything to his Elohim. And, uh, huh? uh, Joseph, sorry, Joseph was attributing everything to Elohim. And uh, there's also a story in the book of Yasher where he needed to speak a lot of languages. He, he needed to speak languages so that uh, he could be promoted because that's the only way you could be in that position. And he was still going back to prison. If you read the book of Yasher and you connect that with uh, uh, Psalm chapter 81, verse 5. If you go to Psalm 81. Psalm 81. So here it says in verse 5, This he ordained in Yosef for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt where I heard a language that I understood not. 
And basically what the requirement was, he needed to speak multiple languages in order for him to be under Pharaoh. And Yahuwah gave him all these languages in the prison cell because he could not be promoted if he did not know these languages. And eventually he got promoted because he was able to go up the steps where he, uh, there were steps that gives him, uh, in the book of Yasher, meron paakyat na hagdan that uh, pag nakaakyat ka dun, then you're the only one who is fit to be under Pharaoh. And that's where Yosef, you can see that Elohim was giving him wisdom and all. And in verse 40, to make the long story short, he became uh, the ruler of all of Egypt, of all the land. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And with this story, you will see the position of the word of Yahusha in the Elohim structure. Okay? So we'll go to that later on. And in verse 46, here it mentions, And Yosef was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Yosef went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. It's a, it's a good foreshadow of Yahusha because he became ruler of all the land. And then later on, you will see that he bare two children, and we'll study that later. Uh, he, he bore, he begat Manasseh, and then Ephraim, and then in verse 53, what the dream, hap, uh, the, the interpretation of the dream happened, verse 53, and the seven years of plenteous that was in the land of Egypt were ended, and then famine came okay and then famine came and then the next story would be his brothers visiting him in egypt or not not really knowing that he was in egypt but we'll see again some parallels of yosef in uh with yahusha brother gary all right uh yun po yung sinasabi ni sir na another parallel yung yun niya. He was 30 years old when he is reigning in Egypt. And alala nyo, Egypt is a picture ng world. Okay? When Yahushua started his ministry, how old is he? Ilang taon po siya? He was 30 years old. All right. But on his, in his, on his 12 years old, nung 12 pa lang po siya, nagtuturo na po siya sa, sa sinagog. Kausap niya na yung mga doktor, mga rabbis. Okay? But yung na-establish yung... yung, yung yung ministry niya when Yahushua was 30 years old. And ito, ganun din dito si Joseph sa verse 46. What else? Ano po yung makikita nating mga parallel? Nung si Joseph is nakakulong for 12 years when and after that is na italaga sa naging kanang kamay ng pinuno ng land ni, ni Pero. When Yahushua was in the grave for three days, then after that is he proclaims the eternal life the everlasting life, and nakikita nyo po na yung mga bagay na to, nang sinasabi ng scriptures, there is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. Lahat po ng mga nangyayari at mangyayari pa is under the plan of the seven days, which is the 7,000 years na inilatag sa atin sa panahon pa lang nitong Genesis 1.1. Alright? So nakikita nyo yung mga, mga, mga parallel na to. When, when Pharaoh clothed him in a glorious robes sa chapter 41 verse 42, okay, na dinamitan siya, the same din po ng Panginoong Yahushua. Okay? Makikita po natin sa Matthew chapter 24 verse 30, sa, sa pagbabalik ng Panginoong Yahushua, unang pagpunta niya rito sa lupa, sino siya? He is a servant. He died for our sins. He is a servant. The second time, he will be a king. He will be a king. Alright? So, ganun din po si Joseph. Nung unang pagpasok niya ng Egypt, ano siya? He was a servant. Okay? He was despised. Ipinakulong siya ng walang kasalanan. Pinatay ang Panginoong Yahushua ng walang kasalanan. Alright? You see the parallel kung paano po natin nakikita ngayon yung mga sinasabi dito sa Genesis pa lang. Tapos nangyari pagdating 2,000 years after then we can see na lahat ng mangyayari in the future nandito po sa scriptures. Kailangan lang nating makita, kailangan nating aralin and pray na ipaunawa sa atin 
ng Panginoong Yahuwa. Alright, sir? Amen. So, I hope that uh, what we went through today is pretty clear. It's a good story. Nothing really uh, controversial about it. Uh, I think what I can leave behind uh, to think about, we have this question, and I've always heard this in one of the my pastors before. Yung tanong na, why me? Bakit sa akin nangyayari ito, Panginoon? Why me? And the pastor would always say, why not? <laughs> why not? Because uh, we have to understand that Yahuwah knows everything. Romans 8.28, I won't quote it again, but God takes us through life, good or bad, remember that it's always for our refining. Yahuwah wants to refine us to be better each time. Okay? And as you see, Yosef was in a position where he was the favorite son. He had the best robe from his brethren, but he lost everything that he had. He, had, he lost everything for 13 years. But Yahuwah turned that into blessing. And it's a, it's, it shows us that Yahuwah can restore what we have lost. All right? And it's actually a picture of Israel also. If, if we study the restoration of Israel, I hope that we understand later on or even now that we are being restored back into the image of Yahuwah. And this, everything that we're learning, especially from these stories, are pictures of how we should be like. These testimonies are examples for us that we should be like Yosef in being humble, in not grieving, uh, in, not, uh, in uh, not murmuring in his life, but always trusting in Yahuwah, always getting the wisdom that he learned from his father. Remember, mag-isa na lang po niya sa Egypt. He was in the world already. And the only things that he could uh, ponder on are the words of his father. Hindi naman, nung inutusan po siya, napakainin niya yung kanyang mga kapatid. Sa tingin niyo, dala niya yung mga bagahe niya. Sa tingin niyo, dala niya yung mga, mga, mga binabasa nila ng kanyang tatay. He had nothing with him. He was thrown into a pit. Even his robe was taken out of him. And there, he did not have anything. What? was with him the words of his father, the words of Yahuwah, which was his helper. Now you have a written book, tamad pa tayo magbasa. Diba? We have something that we can hold on to, but we're not holding on to it. So what do, you, what do we expect? Do we expect to be spiritually strong? Do we expect to be not tested by Yahuwah? Let, let's learn the words, these words. Remember Yaqub when he went to the house of Laban before, before when he ran away from his brother? Wala rin siyang hawak mo, di ba? But Yahuwah has blessed these people. And these are testimonies that we have to look into because we, we never know what Yahuwah has planned for us. The only assurance that we can get is just by learning the word of Yahuwah and understanding that it's not about us, it's about Yahuwah, it's about knowing who our Creator is. All right? So, uh, I hope that uh, we all learned from our scripture study this morning and uh, just ponder upon it. Maybe you have insights. Feel free to share in our uh, comments, uh, comments page. And there's a lot to learn from the here. I believe we, we, we still missed a lot, but I hope that whatever we discussed this morning has been an encouragement to you and has been beneficial to all of us. All right, so any last words, Brother Gary, before I close in prayer? 12 years, six months. Abangan natin. <laughs> 12 years versus six months. All right. 12 years versus six months. And, I, okay. and if we did not maximize that time, that six months, I hope from today onwards, we'll maximize that time to know Yahweh. Otherwise, we will just continue on procrastinating and procrastinating. And hindi nyo mamamalayan, 70 years old, old na pala kayo, and yet you did not really strive to know who Yahweh is. And maybe a lot of people still don't know what is on my t-shirt. And I, I will wear this always in the scripture studies. 
because this is who you serve. This is your Elohim. If you, tr you truly believe this name, this is who we, we are talking about. So if we do not know this name, then how can we know more about our Savior, our, our Elohim? Right? So I hope we, you know why, why we are promoting, why we are striving to know all of these things so that we understand who, who our real creator is. All right? So let's go to Yahuwah in prayer. Our Father Yahuwah, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father, we thank you for uh, this beautiful morning and noon that you have given us to study your word. We thank you, Father, for the story of Yosef. Thank you so much for uh, giving us these insights about his life. And more importantly, how he foreshadows our Savior, our Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. I pray, dear Father, please help us to be like Yosef and more so help us to be like your son, Yahushua, who was obedient even unto death, even up to the death of the cross. And I pray, dear Father, help us to be humble, help us to keep our integrity, help us to be honest in all our dealings, help us to be just patient with your plan in our lives. We know that you are all working in us. And I just pray, dear Father, help us to be reliant on your word. Help us to uh, use your word to be our helper every day. Thank you so much, Father, for this morning. Please bless your people. Please guide us into all truth and help us to understand the path that we are treading, especially for my brethren who, have, who still have doubts, who still do not understand where, where we are going. I just pray, dear Father, help us to understand all of these things. And may we all be responsible in seeking you in reading your word, in studying your word in our individual lives. Thank you so much. And I give you all the glory and all the praise and all of these things I ask and pray in Yahushua's name. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you, brethren. Before I end, one thing I, I wanted to read before we end, if you go to Psalm, Psalm chapter uh, 31. Let me just read the whole chapter. It's just 24 verses. And if, you truly, if we truly understand these uh, verses, then you can relate it to Yosef and you can just mark it. Parang buhay to ni Yosefa. All right. Verse 1 says, I thee, O Yahuwah, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. So if, you're, if you are in that state where you think you're depressed, where you think not, everything's not going right, just read this psalm. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. What's his name? Yahuwah. Verse 4. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou art my strength. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Yahuwah, El of truth. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in Yahuwah. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities and hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room have mercy upon me, O Yahuwah, for I am in trouble. Now, you could just imagine yourself, and if you can put this in perspective in your life, you could say, Panginoon, have mercy on me. Mine eye is consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my belly, for my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. He's saying years. It's not just a couple of days. It's not just a couple of months. Months. He's saying, my years with sighing, my strength faileth because of my iniquity and my bones are consumed. So basically, he is actually acknowledging his iniquity in him. I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors and a fear to mine acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many. 
<laughs> Just like his brother slandering him, fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O Yahuwah. I said, thou art my Elohim. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Yahuwah, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be Yahuwah, for he hath shewed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplication when I cried unto thee, O oh, love Yahuwah, all ye his saints. For Yahuwah preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah for the reading of his word. And I hope and pray that we all love Yahuwah, that we all hope in Yahuwah, because he will be our strength. All right? He will be the one who can take us out in whatever situation we are. And take note, this is not the, this is, you can relate it to the story of David. But this is actually a psalm of David. So, so many testimonies in scripture. And it's not only six months that they're str struggling. Uh, with with uh, Yosef, it was 12, 13 years where he was being a servant, thrown into prison, and forgotten about his uh, friend, uh, butler friend. Pero Yahuwah had his perfect timing to promote him. To the highest uh, position. Hindi man tayo maging presidente ng Pilipinas. Hindi ko sinasabi na mararating natin. Alright? But what I want, what the word wants us to understand is that Yahuwah is there to preserve the faithful. Yahuwah is there to take good care of us. So let's continue trusting in Yahuwah. Alright? My Elohim should be your Elohim as well. Our Elohim. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, brethren, for your time today. And don't forget, it's our Sabbath service tomorrow. Hopefully, I'm hoping we finish three chapters today. I'm hoping we can finish all the chapters tomorrow. If not, at least finish this chapter, chapters where he presents himself to his brethren and eventually they know who Yosef is. So we can summarize uh, the story of Yosef and uh, summarize the whole Bereshit, the whole book of Genesis, all right? And uh, we also have, I also created a table about Yosef, which we'll go through tomorrow, all right? So thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, let's all be like Yosef, but more importantly, let's all be like Yahusha because Yosef was also like Yahusha, all right? So thank you and have a great lunch. Prepare for the Sabbath and let's see tomorrow, each other tomorrow. Amen. I hope you understand why I say Amen, <laughs> not Amen, not Amon. All right? Amon. Amen. Amen is the right word to say, uh, is the right uh, pronunciation. And if you spell Amen, then you, can, you should put an I at the, before the end. Amen. All right, Brother Gary, anything before I cut it short? All right. Bye-bye, because it's already long, so I'll cut it short. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Itapo tayo bukas.